It is part two of chapter 16 review, section 16.7, surface integrals. Let the surface S have a parameter representation, R of UV, UV is in D. Then, surface integrals of scalar functions can be evaluated by using this formula. For given function, uh, in this uh, transform, you have to express the function as a function of um, UNV, that is scaling factor. So we can say uh, ds is the magnitude of R sub u cross R sub v dA. A similar formula for line integrals is given here. And once the line, the curve is parameterized as a function of t, and t is moving from A to B, then the line integral can be evaluated using this formula. In this case, the scaling factor is magnitude of R prime. So it's quite similar. Coming back to uh, surface integrals, once the surface is given by the graph z equals g of xy, then r sub x cross r sub y is this, that is a normal vector. So the magnitude of that one here. So this is a special form of this formula. For vector fields, surface integrals can be obtained. But now we consider only the across the surface. For vector field, there is notation. Uh, by definition, we are taking only the normal component of the vector field. Using identities for n, we have that one ds can be replaced by that way. Then we can reach uh, this uh, final formula. We'll use this one for uh, uh, evaluation. Also, uh, for line integrals of a vector field, we have a similar formula. For line integrals, rather than a normal component, we are taking the tangential component. So we say usually for line integral is along the curve. And over there, for surface integral, across the surface. Okay. So tangential component, there is unit uh, tangential vector, which is same as that one. Ds is now that one. So we can simplify. Now that is the evaluation formula for line integral. For surface integral, that is for evaluation. Okay. Also, uh, for surface integral, uh, now the surface is given by the graph of this function, then vector representation can be made, and its normal vector is here, and for the vector field uh, surface integral, now that's the uh, evaluation formula, and in detail you can see this one, uh, but because of these negations, it is a little bit confusing. So try to use that one rather than the final one. Let's see uh, the example. Mm. Evaluate the uh, surface integral. Now it is a scalar function. SC is the surface whose side is 1 is given by the cylinder, okay, vertical cylinder uh, of radius 1, and whose bottom S2 is disk in the xy plane, and whose top is, again, the same size disk in the plane z equals 1. So let's try to uh, visualize. Okay, this is xy z 
coordinates and then now the surfaces are here there on and like that it's a vertical cylinder uh, with a radius one and height is one the problem is saying that side is s1 and bottom is s2 and top is s3 okay so it is asking the surface integral for whole surface whole surface so that we have to get the surface integral piece by piece let's begin with uh, s1 the side okay for s1 it's a simple vertical surface once we consider now xy direction this is a circle of radius 1 so that you may consider that is as a function of theta for angle now height is for uh, the z is for height then in xy direction radius 1 uh, cosine theta and sine theta and the vertical direction we have z then the domain uh, must be for theta we have 0 to 2 pi all circulation and for z we have to have from 0 to 1 okay that is parameterization now uh, we are using uh, the formula uh, so that okay that formula yeah we are trying to use this formula so that the function must be expressed as a function of theta and z and we have to get also this scaling factor now um, so you have to get here all uh, theta okay in fact yeah theta derivative then that must be minus sine theta and cosine oops that must be theta right okay that is now mm, cosine theta and zero and r of z there must be uh, now zero zero one so that if you um trying to get the cross product then now you consider ijk and the metric and determinant then you can see here that must be cosine theta and now that must be sine theta and that must be zero so that here length of this uh, cross product must be one so integral surface integral over s1 must be now we have to express the integrand as a function of uh, now that mm, parameterization so it's x squared plus y squared then cosine squared sine squared which is one and z is there so that now that one is over the x squared plus y squared plus z is 1 plus z and we have a scaling factor 1 and dA right okay uh, from here the theta is moving from 0 to 2 pi and z is from 0 to 1 so that is 1 plus z and dz and d theta theta independent so theta integral can be done quickly and from this one now we have one from that one we have now half right so that that is 3 over 2 2 pi so we have 3 pi for side s1 we have 3 pi now let's try to do uh, s2 
Okay, for S2 in the bottom, that is the surface integral of S2 at surface the function okay, z equals 0 so that the original integrand x squared plus y squared plus z can be written uh, as here x squared plus y squared and ds. That is a flat surface. So directly you can get it, the surface element and that can be uh, same as a da and the bottom because it's flat. Okay. Now, so that here this is polar region, so it's whole circulation and r is moving from 0 to 1. There is r squared. We need one more r scaling factor for this uh, change of variable and dr d theta. Right. So that is now um, uh, for this one. Now uh, theta integration is two pi. There is r cubed. So one over four r to the four, evaluating from zero to one. That makes one quarter, which means that is pi over two. So from uh, bottom we have pi over two. For S3, now it's again flat, so it's easy. Here for S3, now that is same as x squared plus y squared plus now z is 1 uh, ds. Only difference from this one is now this is flat, so you may consider this one as the same domain like that. Now height is 1 and only the difference is 1 is added so that from previous one pi over 2 we have to add here the that as a 3 and 1 ds which is the area is a radius 1 uh, circle of radius 1 so that uh, we have, that is, uh, pi r squared r is 1, so we have that. This is 3 pi over 2. Okay. So if we add these three quantities, 3 pi and half pi and 3 pi over 2, then we can reach at 5 pi. Okay. Now, this problem is the same as uh, uh, the problem in uh, the lecture. So, um, we solved it in the classroom. So, try to solve uh, the problem uh, yourself. Try uh, once more. Then you can understand this one uh, quite deeply. We have a remark here. The flux across the surface uh, that is the surface integral of a vector field, and that is the definition. We are taking only the normal component, and this one is uh, the evaluation formula. Now, let's solve this problem. Evaluate the surface integral of a vector field, which is given here, and S is the boundary of a solid. Uh, region E enclosed by the paraboloid and the plane, the flat plane, bottom plane. So here, okay, let's uh, now recognize the surface. This is XYZ coordinate. That is X direction, Y direction, and that is Z direction. Z equal 1 minus x squared y squared and cut by the bottom uh, plane. Okay, that is given in this way and like that. Right? So the surface uh, is whole surface. 
is closest of yes. The, the upper part we say that is S1, bottom S2. Of course, that radius must be 1. Okay. So we have to get um, the integral part by part. Let's begin with uh, S1, the side. Then that must be, because it's given by graph, so that all of xy can be here minus g sub x, so that this 2x minus g sub y. No, 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 just a moment. We are not really uh, getting the cross product. In the beginning, uh, there must be y and we'll minus x together, minus y together. We have to uh, uh, calm down. Okay, then uh, from this one, r sub x cross r sub y must be minus uh, g sub x, which means that is 2x, and uh, minus g sub y, 2y, and 1. And f of r, okay, we are using now that formula, f of r, Okay, x, y, z, so that that must be x and y, z is here 1 minus x squared minus y squared, right? So from these two equations, we can get um, f of r dot r sub x cross r sub y, uh, that is, okay, this is 2x squared plus 2y squared. From here, 2x squared, 2y squared, and plus 1 minus x squared minus y squared. So we have 1 plus x squared plus y squared. Right? So uh, the surface integral across S1, that one, is the same as surface integral over d, and this is 1 plus x squared plus y squared, and dA. Of course, uh, that representation is made. Of course, that, that is from D2S, where D is at the bottom, which is a circle of radius 1. So uh, that one, the polar region, from 0 to 2 pi, and r is moving from 0 to 1, the integral is 1 plus r squared. We need one more r, scaling factor, and dr d theta. Uh, this one is theta independent. So um, theta integral can be done just simply 2 pi. And now we have to get integral from 0 to 1. That's OK, r plus r cubed dr, so that 2 pi from the first one, we have half. From this one, we have 1 quarter. So that is 3 over 4. So we have um, yeah, 3 pi over 2. So that is the surface integral for side. How about the bottom, S2? We can uh, consider parameterization, but, uh, okay, integral through S2, F, Ds, that one. Now, we may use this definition. Before going there, we may consider that one. Okay, then uh, that is same as over S2. Now F dot N ds. Here this N is 0, 0, minus 1. For that one, uh, positive orientation is go down direction because it's a flat uh, surface. So that is now integral over S2, 
And what is f? f is x, y, z, and with the dot product, so that is minus c, uh, 0, 0, minus 1, multiplied and summed, then that must be minus z and ds. Now, on this bottom, z is 0, so that the integral must be 0. So by adding 2, this one and that one, we can reach at the final answer. Okay, now the next section, 16.8, Stokes theorem. Stokes theorem is a high dimensional version of Green theorem. Uh, Green theorem is uh, defined uh, for uh, the two dimensional vector field. Once the vector field has continuous partial derivatives, then now, for closed uh, curve, the integration, that is the definition in detail, can be evaluated by using the area integral. Now, the integrand is q sub x minus p sub y. In vector form, it is the same as curve f and now normal component, upward normal component only. That is uh, the Green theorem we learned earlier. And Stokes theorem is expansion of that one. Now we are dealing with a three-dimensional vector field. And S is just uh, oriented piecewise smooth surface. And we consider the boundary. The boundary is a simple closed piecewise smooth and positive uh, orientation. So now we are considering, rather than flat surface, we are considering general surface. Okay, let's try to uh, make one surface like that. So uh, this is a boundary, and that is a, in the surface. You may think of this kind of surface. Then, now, uh, okay, this rotation, this is front and that is back. Then that is a positive orientation, and that is now S surface. Okay. So for this general uh, surface, we can get a line integral along that um, curve boundary that can be uh, evaluated by using the surface integral here. This one must be curl of f uh, and that ds. So it is expansion of uh, that green theorem. This is for flat uh, vector field and flat domain, a flat curve. But for that one, it's a general surface in three-dimensional space. And along the boundary, we can get the line integral and positive oriented. And that can be the same as this surface integral of curve f. Of course, uh, to get that one, and by definition, we are taking only a normal component, and so that we can reach at uh, this formula. So it's quite similar. Here now, after taking curl, uh, we. Uh, take only the normal component, right? Okay, so that's uh, the Stokes theorem. Okay. Here we um, uh, summarize, and that is a kind of strategy for solving uh, surface integrals related with line integrals. That is the Stokes theorem curl of f ds. So that is surface integral can be done with this line integral. In evaluation, we are using this formula once it is parameterized. And also we can use this formula when it is parameterized. 
So uh, what you have to do first is to recognize the surface and its boundary. And you have to introduce transformation for this surface integral. Now, um, from a region, you have to uh, define, find a transformation. For that one, you have to find a representation from an interval. Okay. Now, let's try to solve this problem. It's the same as one exercise problem uh, you are solving. Use the stock theorem to evaluate this one. That means that for uh, this one, we may use line integral. So practically, we are using this formula, right? Okay. Now, let's uh, recognize uh, the the surface and uh, boundary. Okay, vector field is given in this way. S is part of sphere, that is radius square root of A, and lies inside the cone, and now oriented upward, so that counterclockwise rotation is positive uh, uh, orientation. Okay. So let's try to uh, visualize. This is XYZ coordinate. We have um, a sphere of radius square root of A. Okay, it's a little bit ugly, like an apple. Okay, now the cone is given here, along with a 45 degree angle. And now inside of this cone, so that this portion is the surface, what uh, the problem is saying. So that is surface, and then the C is the boundary, like that. So to evaluate this one here, now if we have representation, then from A to B, and now f of r dot r prime dt, right? So first we have to make representation. We have to recognize this boundary. Okay, how can we found, find this boundary? That is intersection um, between this sphere and cone. So now from this one, z squared equal x squared plus y squared. So from sphere, now x squared plus y squared plus z squared, which is a, but z squared is x plus x squared plus y squared, so that we have two x squared plus y squared. Okay, that means x squared plus y squared equal 4 is a circle of radius 2. So if we, we go down, then uh, uh, there must be 2 here. Okay. So we can parameterize this uh, flat circle out of t. That's radius 2, so the 2 cosine t to sine t, right? uh, that is x, y direction, and what is height? Okay, now um, here, okay, that is um, from here, we can get now z is square root of x squared plus y squared equal square root of 4, which is 2. So height is always two. Okay, that's uh, so we can get this parameterization. Of course, t must be the whole circulation from zero to two pi. Right now, we have to have f of r. Okay, that one is minus y. So it's minus y 
minus 2 sine t x which is 2 cosine t and x squared plus y squared that is this squared 4 cosine squared plus 4 sine squared which must be 4. Now um, here r prime that is minus 2 sine t for that one derivative must be 2 cosine t for this one derivative must be 0 if we try to get the dot product fr dot r prime then that is uh, 4 sine squared 4 cosine squared sine squared plus cosine squared is 1 so that that's it Okay, so uh, the given integral is the same as integral, line integral from a to b, a is 0, b is 2 pi, and this uh, one is same as 4, and dt, 4 times 2 pi is 8 pi. So that's the final answer. Okay. Okay, now... We'll go to the last section, the divergent theorem. Okay. Now, E is a simple solid region, is a boundary region. S is the boundary surface of E, given with a positive orientation. For closed surface, outward direction is positive. Now, for three-dimensional vector field, F, we assume uh, it has continuous partial derivatives. Then the surface integral of the vector field and over the uh, closed surface can be obtained through this volume integral of divergence of the vector field. That is uh, divergence theorem. Okay, let's try to solve uh, the problem, use the divergent theorem to evaluate the total flux. Okay, that is called the uh, flux. But sometimes it's called the total flux. Now, if we try to use divergent theorem, then what we need is just divergence of that one, and we have to recognize E and surface. Let's, uh, let's see that one. S is the a part of a cylinder and of radius 2 lies between and 0 and 1. Okay. So S and E can be recognized in this way. Okay, that's x, y, z direction. And here radius 2 and height 1, small vertical cylinder. Right? That is 1, and that is 2, right? Okay, that is side is uh, S, and inside is E. Let's try to get now divergence of F. Okay, not this one. We try to get X derivative for this P. Then these two will be zero and we have only one plus. From this one we have we try to get y derivative that is y independent, so it must be zero. For this one z derivative, which is one. So that, that is true. So the total flux, the given integral, must be the same as the volume integral over E and divergence is two. Okay. okay, now here, so it is the same as twice. Now, if it is 1, then there is a volume. We have to measure the volume of E, and the bottom area is pi r squared, 2a, r is 2, 2 squared, height is 1. That is the volume, so there is a 4 pi, 
times 2. So we have 8 pi. That's the uh, final answer for the problem. OK, we have a remark. The divergent theorem is given as, now, OK, that is, the for closer surface, uh, the factor field integration, surface integral. But in any case, by definition, we are taking only uh, normal components. But in divergent theorem, it's saying that it's the same as volume integral inside, along with uh, divergence of f. OK. So uh, with this uh, remark, we can solve this problem. Use the divergent theorem to evaluate this integral. But in this integral, there is no uh, explicit f. So eventually, to get divergence of f, you have to find f. Then, uh, because of this term, we may consider this one is the same as f dot n. OK. From the given surface, we can find n. Then we can decide f, finally. And after finding uh, f, now take uh, divergence. And here, volume integral can be performed. OK. Now, what is S? S is the, uh, the sphere. It's not really unisphere. It's a sphere of uh, radius 2. OK. Uh, so um, here, once we go to the sphere, like that, then now this is uh, x, y, z uh, coordinate and radius 2. Once you start from here, then normal direction from this one. Now, the direction is basically same as now x and y and z. In fact, by taking uh, the gradient, you can find, because it's a level surface, in fact, there's 2 and 2 and 2, but a scale by 2 anyway. That is, so we may uh, say, rather than this one, uh, x and y and z, it doesn't matter, right? Times 2 get outside. Now, direction is this one. We have to find a unit uh, normal vector, out of normal vector. So you, we have, you have to uh, scale it. Now, for that one, so that we try to measure the length of V, which is now same as now 2 squared of x squared plus y squared plus z squared. OK. But we already know this is 4. So that uh, that is square root of 4. So that, oops, we have uh, uh, finally the length is 4. So we have to divide by 4, so that n is v over 4. That is same as half um, x, y, z. Right? That is 2. So that is um, n. OK. We got n. Then we may uh, find f. What is f? OK, we'll make a dot product along with this uh, f. And here, uh, this portion is x squared. So we may start with, uh, for example, there is 2x in the beginning. Then 2x times half x will make x squared. For a second component, we have a half y. So that now 2 uh, sine x then half y times 2 sine x will make that one. Now we have half x, half z, 
and here half g squared. If we put here z, then that will be f. Right? You can easily check that the dot product from this one, now f dot n, then you can easily see, okay, let's say there is f of x, y, z, then there is f. Right? You can easily uh, check here. So we found uh, the vector field, and we can take divergence of the vector field. Then from this one, x derivative we have 2, y derivative there will be 0, and z derivative there will be 1, so that we have a 3. So the integral, given integral is same as volume integral over e, and now integral in the 3. So that is the same as 3 times of volume of that, volume of this um, the sphere, solid sphere, so 4 over 3 pi, now r cubed, so 2 cubed, right? So um, that is, uh, okay, so 4 and 8, so 32 pi, 3 will be cancelled, so that's the final answer. Okay? Okay. Yeah, this is uh, the end of the review. Thank you.